the Bitcoin Explorer and like what does a block look like in a Bitcoin and now these are the limitations of Bitcoin one of the major limitation like is the limited support for programmability like as I said the Bitcoins uh, the script the scripting language of Bitcoin is during incomplete it cannot support large num uh, large programs of like, it cannot support large number of opcodes so we come to ethereum so like it was proposed in like year 2014 okay which can overcome the limited programmability of bitcoin it is mostly similar to bitcoin except in two aspects the first one is like uh, although it uses proof of work ethereum also uses proof of work but it uses a different version called ethash okay i'm not going to discuss what is ethash but like for your understanding i'm just it, it is also sim similar to proof of work but a little bit different and the second most uh, important difference between ethereum and bitcoin is ethereum do not use utxos type of transactions where bitcoin uses utxo okay sorry i have not gone into what is utxo like it is called as an unspent transaction output uh, let me show you uh, how a transaction looks like in the bitcoin so this is a, one of the transactions in bitcoin you can see here there is some input uh, there is some input and this is some output and this is the value transferred from these inputs to these outputs so what happens uh, generally uh, in our existing bank models uh, we have accounts right so if i am transferring 100 amount from my account to your account that means 100 is debited from my account and 100 is added to your account however in bitcoins there is no concept of accounts so there are only uh, utxos so what is this utxos utxos uh, like for a transaction there are some inputs and outputs the total is called as utxo so these inputs are outputs of some other transactions okay so a transaction will take outputs of some other transactions and include it a transaction and uh, the output uh, again will have some value so here these are two inputs for this transaction and this is the output of this transaction so there are no concept of accounts so uh, these are the uh, transactions which are having this bitcoins now is transferred to this transaction okay so this is one of the main difference between utxo and accounts so ethereum follows account model instead of utxo model okay so in the morning i have shown you what bitcoin consists of bitcoin consists of shared ledger and cryptography okay although peer to peer is underlying it contains shared ledger cryptography and some consensus algorithms so ethereum also contains all these factors plus something called as shared contract or smart contract okay so ethereum is a turing ethereum has a turing complete language it has its own uh, virtual machine which will compile the opcodes the ethereum opcodes that virtual machine is called as ethereum virtual machine okay which will be executing the transactions as well as the smart contracts written uh, using uh, one of the scripting languages ethereum supports a wide variety of scripting languages one of the major scripting languages is solidity so in this session i'm going to explain uh, or i'm going to show you how to write a smart contract in a solidity and how to deploy it on a blockchain and i will also show some aspects of evm and some aspects of transactions and accounting model so these are the differences between Bitcoin and Ethereum. The major difference is uh, it uses a different version of Bitcoin's proof of work. The second one is Ethereum don't follow UTXOs. Ethereum follows accounting model. And the third major thing is Ethereum scripting language is Turing complete. That means it can support some large programs. And this is a small um, pseudo code for a contract. Okay, it is it is similar to our Java programs or Python programs okay or some c programs so smart contract as i said in the morning it is simple it is simply a program but this program is executed in blockchain okay not on our local machines or not on our like local development environment okay so the smart contract 
code is executed on blockchain okay so it's simple like if if you take any programming language the pseudo code looks like it can have some if else clauses the start and end and then some conditions if this condition is satisfied this statement is executed if this statement this condition is not satisfied this statement is executed okay so smart contract also contains the similar kind of uh, what, what we can say language primitives or language structure okay which is similar to most of the languages which we know and uh, i'm not explaining each and every detail of ethereum okay as i go along like uh, as uh, uh, i will be writing the smart contract i will uh, explain different uh, functionalities or new things in ethereum network now i'm directly going to smart contract development environment so uh, sir how on doubt sir uh, you can correlate yeah. some sort of uh, specific applications uh, it will be useful to us no uh, rather than you are discussing general aspects of um, smart contract development environment you will yeah, yeah. Some, uh, uh, i will be, i will be writing a program yeah okay which yeah. is a generalized application okay so, that's fine yeah so the yeah, this is the development environment for a smart contract development okay so first of all we need a blockchain so yeah, if it is mainnet that is ethereum mainnet which is already running and ethereum also provides some test nets which we can use to deploy our smart contracts and we can also have a local blockchain okay i will also show you what is this local blockchain and how to set up this okay this is one thing and we need ides to write smart contracts we can use the web ide remix or we can use our own ides like vs code or atom and any kind of ides so normally i use vs code first of all i will uh, demonstrate how to use remix and then they will move to vs code and we need a wallet okay uh, we'll use metamask as a wallet first i will show what is metamask and we uh, uh, i'll show you how we can transfer money from one account to another account and lastly framework so truffle is a very good framework which will help us to develop the smart contracts quickly okay uh, so then i'll also show uh, as i have shown with bitcoins so how block how uh, what are the components inside a block and what does the block contain so i will show the similar kind of thing with ethereum also but let me go to the remix browser and uh, uh, let me start a small program or let me write a small program so that i can explain you more clearly okay sorry uh, before going to uh, remix let me show you uh, what is metamask so uh, so metamask is a wallet like as the description it is a gateway to your blockchain apps so you can install this metamask it's a simple procedure you can just it's a chrome extension okay uh, you can add this metamask as an extension to your chrome and you can set up a password and then you will land on this space so here you will have several options uh, ethereum mainnet robston testnet zero all testnets and this is my local network so currently i'm not connected to ethereum mainnet because i don't have a real ethers so to work with it i have only uh, testnet uh, i am connected to this ring bay testnet okay and i have some amount in the ring bay testnet so this is the amount i am having currently and this is my account address and each account will have a uh i said you in the morning so we have only public and private keys we don't have any uh kyc or account ids we have only public and private keys so this is my public key uh, i can show you clearly yeah so this is my public key and i can also uh, we can also export our private key currently i'm not doing this okay so this is my public key i am identified only with this public key on this ring bay test network and this is the amount of either the balance current i am having now what i will do i will send some amount to this another account that is this account to you can see account to is having only 0.01 ethers uh, account one is having 
zero eight nine nine ethers. Now let me send zero point one ethers to account two, zero point zero one ethers to account two. Then okay, first let me copy account two's address. So this is the asset and this is the amount. So when I click next, it will ask for confirmation. So what happens here is I am signing with my private key. So the private key is associated with this account one. So without this private key, I cannot send this transaction or this amount from my account one to account two. So you can see here the transaction is still pending so it should now what happens it should be executed by a miner and it should be included in a block and the block should be propagated to the entire network and at least 50 percent of that network should accept my transaction so that all happened now and i get a confirmation so this is my transaction so uh, i have copied the transaction id and i will show the transaction on a real explorer so this is a real ring bay explorer so if i type my transaction id so you will get all this transaction details so it was like 25 seconds ago and this is the from address to address and this is the value and this is a transaction fee of course i have not paid the transaction fee it is automatically calculated but i couldn't uh, uh, like I couldn't show it to you it is automatically calculated and this will be go given to the block producer uh, this transaction fee is calculated from something called as gas and gas price I will explain what is gas and what is gas price so this is a this is a real transaction of course uh, I have not done it on ethereum mainnet but I have done it on ring bay testnet okay till here it is similar to bitcoin right so i have some money in my account and i have sent it to some other account this transaction i have broadcasted some miners picked this transaction in uh, uh, verified it included it in their block and then then proof of work successfully produced the nonce and then they have included that nonce in the block and the block is propagated and every other miner has included it in their local blockchain Okay, and this is the value that is given to the miner for doing all this task. And my transaction is included in this block. Okay, so this is the block, and it has 35 transactions and some internal contract transaction. I will show you what is internal contract transaction. This is for a simple transaction. Till now, it is similar to Bitcoin. Now, uh, let me uh, let me write a program. Okay, I will explain what is that program so that you can uh, get an understanding of what is this smart contract and I will also tell you what is the difference of executing this program in a centralized server also. So the second development tool which uh, I will explain to you is Remix. So Remix, see, writing smart contracts and deploying them is a simple process in ethereum so this is a remix web ide okay i have already created a workspace called anits okay so uh, i can write the contract code here i can compile it here and i can deploy it here itself okay so this web uh, remix ide is very powerful then we can uh, develop the end-to-end -end smart contract development can be done on this remix so we have different folders okay let us concentrate on this contract okay somebody raised their hand somebody has raised their hand Okay. Sir, uh, the font size is smaller, sir. So, if possible, you can increase. Yeah, sure. Thank you.
think it is visible now. Little yeah. more is so, so little more. Yeah, it's it's okay. Okay. So let me create a contract here. Uh, I, I will be creating a betting contract. Okay. Uh, I think you might have had this problem, coin flipping problem. Uh, like uh, I will flip a coin uh, at my side and you will flip a coin at your side. And uh, if I get zero and you also get zero, I will win. If I get zero, you get one, you win. If I get one, you get zero, I win. And if I get one and you get one, you will win. So I, I will be writing those rules here. So this will be a game and we'll both put the bet on that game and whoever wins the game, they will receive the bet. So this is very basic contract, which I am writing here. Uh, like something called that dot soul. So I'm writing this contract in solidity. Okay. It is one of the scripting languages, the Ethereum EVM machine supports. There are other like uh, serpent. Uh, other scripting languages and there is one more uh, i couldn't recollect the name so there are different versions of uh, scripting languages for ethereum but most people use solidity okay so the structure of the program in solidity is similar to the structure of a program in java or c plus plus so it is very much simple okay uh, first we need to set the compiler version because this is ever upgrading uh, language so it has different compiler versions so i'm setting the compiler version as 0 0.8.0 okay so here itself we can have so many compiler versions okay so currently the latest is 0 0.10 i'm setting it as 0 0.8.0 now so we have classes in Java. Similarly, we have contract in Solidity. So let us name this contract as bet. So let me code the rules here. So user A, B. So if it is user A is 0, user B is 0, user A will win. Uh, if it is 0, 1, B will win. So both are flipping your coins. If it is 1, 0. So these are the inputs and this will be the output. And who are the users? let us fix the users also so user a as i said there are no identities here okay only the, the only identities are public keys so i'm taking this second person b2 as user a and third person db as user b these are two users and this is the game now uh, let us bet the bet is uh, so then like 10 users so this is simple it's like rupees uh, in india either's in ethereum so the bet is 10 ethers now let us write the program uh, so uh, there are two types of variables in so solidity one is the contract storage variables and the other one is memory variable actually there are four types let us confine to only two types one is storage and the other one is memory so this memory types are used in functions storage types are used in the contract state so whatever i am declaring here are storage variables and if i declare something inside a function those are memory variables okay so let us take some storage variables to store okay this is like a very basic programming language so i am writing it like at the basic level 
okay so and i will also tell you how to uh, uh, like how to improve it okay so let us think uh, so both a and b and address of a uh, i'm using one more keyword this is called as payable uh, when you when an address or variables uh, sorry uh, functions risk uh, associated with uh, this either so it should be declared as payable Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Can you repeat it? Uh, what the meaning of payable again? Yeah. What for we so, use it? So, when this address or some functions receives or sends either, it should be declared as payable. Yeah. So, these are our storage variables and now let us declare so how to interact with this contract so we can interact with the contracts only through functions so we can call a function so in our transaction we will include which function to be called and only that function will be executed not that entire contract will be executed in one transaction only functions are executed in a transaction so let us write a function like uh, get input. Let us receive the input here. So now we need to specify the visibility of this function. So there are three visibility levels in Solidity. Uh, not three exactly, uh, more than three. Private, external, and public, mostly used and there is one more thing called internal so there are four uh, visibility specifiers for a function so currently we use public so if it is public only we can call it from outside this contract that is from the account metamask or from anywhere we can call it if it is private or internal we cannot call it from the outside environment like metamask or uh, some other wallets so the next one is we'll receive the bet here so i will declare it as a payable again and this is a function now we need to we receive this input either from a or b right if we receive from a we need to set this variable if you receive from b we, see, we need to set this variable so first uh, let us check uh, so we'll get with a transaction we will get two parameters that is called as message dot sender and message dot value so this message dot sender is a parameter uh, like which consists a value of the transaction initiator okay so the addresses uh, if this address initiates the transaction his value will be there in the message dot sender okay so message dot sender basically have the transaction initiators address If it is B and I said B. Now the bet. So A will send a bet and B also will send a bet. Right. Uh, I will include one more, two more parameters. Like U in bet A and bet B. So if it is A, I need to set bet A. So as I said, uh, as I told you that there are two global variables which will come with the transaction. 
message dot sender and message dot value so this message dot value uh, consists the amount of either associated with a transaction i will show you what will happen with this message dot sender or message dot value so that's it uh, we can include whatever we want but for this example this is enough now uh, after both the users send some bet and their input to this function we can have one more function like declare winner which doesn't need any arguments and it should also be public and it should also be payable now let us encode the rules so what are the rules zero 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 one one zero and one one right So who is the winner here? A. So we'll use a function called transfer, which will transfer uh, the value to the A or B. So on whatever address we use, transfer. So the amount will be transferred to that address. So he's the winner. So he should get his bet as well as the betters of the opponent. So. So if it is zero one, B should be the winner. If it is one zero, A should be the winner. If it is one one, B should be the winner. Okay, all right. This is our contract, a basic contract. Again, we can add whatever we want, but now let me demonstrate how this contract works so now this is the contract so let me compile the contract first and let me check for any errors so there are no errors it is there is an auto auto compile option here so currently there are no errors it's just a warning so now deploy so where should i deploy as i already told you we can deploy it either on mainnet on a testnet on a local node so if it is a local node we will have only one node okay it is not a network it can it is only one node also it is suffice actually it is suffice for our exam uh, example uh mainnet we don't have ethers currently because one either is equals to four thousand dollars okay currently we cannot afford to deploy it on a mainnet and even for testnet also we require some faucet currently i have only 0 0.08 faucet so i cannot use testnet but i'll demonstrate you how to use this local net and how to deploy it on a local net so so here we'll have three different environments as i said if it is a javascript vm it's a local node which will be running on this browser itself okay not even a local node is required on the browser browser can also be a node and we can deploy it on this if it is injected web3 like we can use the metamask here see immediately metamask has been popped up we can connect to metamask and metamask is connected to our ring bin testnet okay so through this injected web3 also we can connect and the last three is web3 provider like uh, if you have our local blockchain we can connect to that local blockchain i will show you how to connect the local blockchain first let me deploy it on a VM. So this VM has already me has already provided me with some around 20 accounts or so 15 to 20 accounts. Okay, uh, I will use only these accounts. And uh, let me explain other factors. So this is the value. So whatever you I am using this message dot value. Okay, I need to give it here. 
okay now what are the units see we have units right rupee paisa and below paisa there are some things okay one well, after rupee we don't have anything but similarly in ethereum we have 0 to 10 power 18 divisions okay so the first the basic division is called as v and the last division is called as either okay so one either equals to 10 to the power of 18 v we can specify whatever units we want let me specify it as either okay now this is the contract name which i wanted to deploy it. so this is a de deployment environment so i am deploying using this address okay now if i click this deploy okay this contract will be deployed on a blockchain node running on in my browser itself okay so let me deploy this so i have deployed this so previously we have seen how a bitcoin transaction looks now we can see how a ethereum transaction looks so it also have a transaction has and this is the account creator you can see here c4 so from c4 you can see if it is a contract deployment you will you will get this type of trans uh, two address okay and what is this gas okay as i said uh, as i said uh, ethereum is a turing complete language such that we can write very big big programs here simply i can write something like uh, a while proof so this will never be executed right this will be containing in an infinite loop okay this will be running in an infinite loop to discourage big programs and these kind of malicious activities ethereum has introduced a concept called gas and this is the gas limit so it block what again how to calculate this block so every opcode so this is a high level language solidity right so this will be compiled into a byte code okay and the byte codes are again divided into opcodes but you might have seen this at an or computer organization subjects okay so the byte code is again divided into opcodes so every opcode the plus opcode minus opcode multiplication opcode push opcode pull sorry not pull pop opcode okay there are different every opcode has some predefined cost associated with them okay so when i compile this it is compiled into an opcodes and the gas is calculated so for a block the there will be a maximum gas limit that means a block can include only this number of opcodes like for example in the bitcoin case i said 1 kb the transaction uh, the block size similarly in ethereum the block size is defined in terms of gas okay then what is this transaction cost so now if i call this get input function this function will be executed right so again this function is compiled into byte code byte code into opcodes every opcode has a predefined gas uh, so now how much gas this function is taking okay even for the storage say i have declared so many storage variables here even for every bit of storage it will cost you some gas okay so this contract deployment has costed me uh, some 348785 gas okay now this gas is is transferred into the form of, this gas is calculated in something called gv okay now this is transferred into either and that is detected from my account that is why there is some uh, either detected from my account okay this is the account i have used it for deployment so i have deployed so it has costed me some gas and that is detected from and this is paid as a transaction fees to the miner who has included my deployment transaction in a block so these are all interrelated okay so the input if it is a contract deployment the input is the contract code itself and there will be no output as we are not sending so we have not used any constructor also we have not sent any value with the transaction so it is zero so this is what a contract deployment looks like now where it is deployed it is deployed in a network but is uh, is i uh, my node i have only a single node is it called as a network 
it is not called a network but it is a simulation of a network this is how actually happens in a uh, ethereum mainnet or some test nets uh, i'll pause here if you have any doubts you can ask regarding this deployment okay so i assume there are no doubts so let me continue yeah so excuse me sir yeah uh, apart from this uh, smart contract coding can you briefly explain about the fields that are existing at the left side deploy and run transactions you now right now you are in deploy and run transactions you are able to see some fields right value contract all those things here yeah yeah similarly in the left side we have four more icons yeah okay okay yeah Sorry. please yeah. explain about those sir. so this is like normal file structure what you will get so we can create the contracts here or uh, this is a new functionalities like we can write the test scripts for these uh, contracts also in this test and uh, the important thing here is attic caps so whenever you com compile a dot sol file this json file is uh, generated so this json file for example this vector json which i have compiled okay contain every information of the contract for example you can see the function names okay and the variable names which i have declared and one important factor is called as aba so if there is an aba that means it will give the signature of the contract itself so we require ABA in order to communicate with the contract which is deployed in the blockchain because code is not available for us. Okay, only ABA is available. We can use this ABA. We should use this ABI. Okay. I'm not able to show the ABA here. This is long. We can use this ABA to communicate with the contract, and that is about this file structure. The second one is, it's what a is compiler. the meaning of, of ABI, sir? Uh, application byte interface, something uh, I couldn't exactly recollect the full form. Like an inter, uh, it's like an interface, sir. Interface, yeah, it's like an oh, interface. Oh, oh okay, sir. Uh, so the next component is the Solidity compiler. Okay, you can set whatever compiler version you want. Currently, I set it as 0 0.8.0. And the language is Solidity. As I said, we can write contracts in different languages. Currently, I'm writing it in Solidity. And the version, like uh, this Ethereum has been hard forked. Uh, maybe in the later sessions, you will know what is hard fork and what is soft fork. Uh, this has been hard forked so many times to include new functionalities. Okay. Uh, and these are the names of those hard forks. Uh, currently, I'm setting it as default. And there is some auto compile option, or we can you can compile it manually. Okay. And this is the contract name which you want to be compiling. And these are the compiling say details. Uh, helpful for debugging. And as I said, this is the bytecode that that can be copied, and this is the ABA that is copied. Okay and the next one is the deployment environment so where you want to deploy your contracts either in your local uh, browser node or a injected uh, web3 that is like metamask or a web3 provider like a local blockchain currently i am setting it as java vm and these are the list of accounts default accounts that you get with this java vm node if i set it to my local blockchain i will get different accounts and the gas limit like how much gas like you wanted to spend for a transaction okay as is, as i said there will be a gas limit for a block similarly there will be a gas limit for a transaction so the number of opcodes a transaction can contain is limited by this gas limit and value what is the value that is associated with this transaction i will show you when i am using uh, when i am sending the transaction to this function get input function and yeah 
then this deploy will deploy the contract or you can load a particular instance of a contract by using the contract address and you will get the interface to interact with the contracts here so these are the two functionalities you can see if it is a public functionality you will get this color and these are the inputs so i have here the input and the same field i will get here i can input the whatever input i want and this call data uh, like it is some kind of advanced topic okay uh, i'm not touching it now and the last one is extension extension so remix have so many types of plugins okay so one you can explore these plugins okay most of these are new uh, like i used to use this mytic security verification plugin which will automatically verify your contract and fix for security bugs and i used to use this one click dap like we can directly on a click we can create and deploy our app and there are so many so many now uh, we have linters like we have linters on uh, our ids so similar kind of linters you will get for remix also and these are all different uh, plugins okay so i have deployed it and now let me interact with this get input functionalities so yeah who is user a is b2 so i went to b2 and i will bet some 10 meters and my input is zero now you'll send a transaction so what happens when i click transaction the transaction will initiate the execution of this function this get input function so now uh, it will be executed and the contract state is written so after i am calling this get input this variables the storage variables values are changed so this means there is a change in contract state and that contract state is included in the transaction okay then that is propagated to the sorry uh, a miner will include the transaction as well as the contract state in the block and the block is propagated to the network okay uh, so the transaction is success okay now you can see here previously his balance used to be 99 now his balance is 89 because we have sent 10 ethers so now the 10 ethers are in the hold of this contract bet so that is why this message dot value is used there and this message dot sender will automatically pick this b2's address now let us go to db and his input is also zero for example and he is also sending some 10 users now both the transactions are success now his balance is also okay uh, his balance is reduced to 93 okay i think i have inputted it wrong so no problem so let us declare the winner so if i click the declare winner this function will be called and the both the inputs are zero and zero that means a should get the value so that is also executed now you can see the a's balance is updated to 106.9 so the b2 address has won the bet and he got the value let us try with this a b and okay we cannot try this with a b because we have hard coded the contract addresses uh yeah so this is a smart contract which you have deployed and we have interacted with the smart contract functionalities now can any of you tell what is the differences between the same program executed in a centralized environment and how the properties like decentralization transparency immutability or uh, uh, we are achieving in here okay i'll pause for a minute if you have any doubts you can ask
So, sir, what I have observed here is based on the smart contract, uh, li the lines of code which you have written, uh, once the winner uh, is, I mean, like based on the inputs, if you are giving 0, 0, if that condition satisfies, yeah. then only the amount is going to be transferred to the other party. Yeah. So it's purely based on the smart contract lines of code. So because of this, we are achieving decentralization uh, property. So there is no trusted party in the middle like bank. Yeah. That is what I have observed. So once the uh, condition satisfies, then only it is transferring from A to B. Otherwise, it is not transferring to anyone. Yes. So... Uh, from this here, here what I understood is uh, it's decentralized and coming to immutability can you explain sir yeah I'll explain so uh, let us assume the same program is written in a server like using Java or some other program now there is a server which is under some uh, X control sir I now, have one doubt sir yeah. uh, this sort of transaction generally we are using a public network that is internet so yeah. Yeah, the hackers are uh, living across the world. They try to hack the information. So, yeah. so how the the mutual uh, the authentication how it will be uh, preserved? Yes, uh, very good question. See, uh, when I'm transferring this ten years from this account to the contract, what happens is like this is like an asset associated with this public key. So in order to transfer this asset, this asset, I need to sign this transaction with my private key. So who knows my private key? Only me knows my private key. So what is signing? The and receiver only know. The yeah. recipient who are, who are accessing your data, the recipient only know. In this case, only the sender knows. Okay. okay. The recipient can verify whether I actually has signed it or not. Oh, that's that that. Uh, the, whether it's a trusted one or not, they have to verify. Yeah, it. Ah, yeah, verify. they can verify it. So that is uh, if there is some hacker in the between and he changes the transaction content also, the signature will differ. The signature won't match. Okay. So there is no problem with that hacking kind of thing here because only I knows the public key. So once I sign it, nobody can change it. If if it is changed, it can be easily detected. Yeah. Now, uh, the same program is written in a server. It is like when some X parties uh, like control. Okay, now this A and B have to put the trust on X. For example, X favors B. Okay, even though uh, B's value is one, A's value is zero. General, sorry, if it is zero, zero, A should win. But this X favors B. So what this X will do? He will change this B's input or A's input and declares that B as the winner. Okay, uh, that centralized the same program runs in the server with a trusted party. That problem may happen. That is the first case. But here, as the smart contract is deployed in the blockchain, nobody controls the blockchain. Nobody can change this logic code. Once it is deployed in the blockchain, it is forever. Nobody can change it. Okay, this code cannot be changed. So the output cannot be changed if it is a code in a block smart contract code on a blockchain that is trust what is immutability here immutability comes in two ways the first way uh, the code of the contract cannot be changed once it is deployed it cannot be changed that is immutability for contract code what is the second immutability see this transaction which has sent money to uh, this account b2 this transaction is also present in a blockchain okay so this transaction also cannot be changed so that the balance which this b2 received cannot be changed at all so that is another kind of immutability we get uh, what is transparency here so all these transactions are publicly visible so everybody knows that a has sent zero and b has sent zero so there is no question of changing those results and uh, that type of what uh, transparency we will get and uh, these are the properties like which we will get with this smart contract and everything so 
if if you still some people has any doubts regarding how we can achieve these properties without a central trusted party you can ask sir can you correlate this with privacy property yes uh, i'm getting, i, I uh, like uh, the addresses are anonymous to yeah. and from and to addresses are anonymous yeah Th with that we can provide a little kind of privacy that nobody knows who yeah. the actual persons are apart from that is there any kind of uh, fields that we need to think of to provide privacy to the transaction yeah i'm coming to that part <laughs> see there are two kinds of privacies in a blockchain privacy for a user identity and privacy for the user data so we can provide privacy for user identity because see this is just a random string with this we cannot infer who is the real user that is the privacy for user identity the second thing is privacy for user data here a is sending some zero b is sending zero this a zero is belongs to a and this zero belongs to b these two are a and b's data okay now see there is a very great flaw in this uh, program so when a, a sends the transaction his input as zero first okay so this is the ace transaction his input is zero this is publicly available okay now b sees this okay and he cannot send zero because if he sends zero a wins okay he cannot send uh, he cannot send only zero okay what he will do he will send one that means he can win now you are getting what is the privacy problem right so the data is publicly visible yes and yes input is publicly visible so after a transaction b can look at a transaction so it is clearly visible that a input is zero so i should not send zero if i send zero i will lose i should only send one yes sir so this is the problem with transparency so blockchain is providing transparency but it is not providing privacy for users data so in this cases what generally we will do is we will not directly send the input okay we will have two functions here we will have only one function right get input generally we will have two kinds of functions one is uh, get commitment and the second one is uh, reveal so this is what we call it is commit and reveal methods so instead of directly sending the input the user hashes his input with a, some random number including some random number and he will put the commitment when both the user submits their commitment okay once they submit their commitment they cannot change okay and then they need to reveal the commitments so then the smart contract executes this functionality and checks for the results so we can provide a little bit of privacy by using uh, only this will work only with this kind of use cases so this is yeah, yes sir thank you privacy. thank you sir yeah uh, so any other doubts so i think i have made some what clear regarding the differences between the trusted third party based programs and smart contract i'll pause for a minute if you have any doubts you can ask. this is very simple very basic contract we can write very complex contracts which generally i have i, I will do but this will be a very good starting point okay uh, let me move to the next environment so we have covered metamask we have covered remix and uh, we have covered testnet for some part now what is this local blockchain so we have very good framework called truffle so this is called as a truffle suit which will provide us like some tools the first one is a truffle framework itself but we can the truffle framework and this ganache ganache is a local blockchain this is just a one click blockchain which we can use for our local testing and development of smart contracts okay let me open ganache so it's simple like it's a simple app image for ubuntu
so here you can have two options you can either create a new workspace or there will be quick start and you will have two uh, corda is also one more public blockchain gana supports both corda and ethereum uh, i will go with ethereum so this is my local blockchain network okay so these are the addresses which i get pre funded with my local blockchain and you can adjust these parameters so if you go to settings you can adjust the host name and network ids as well as the default balance number of accounts and the block gas limit and the gas price also you can set okay these are different uh, parameters you can tune uh, to your requirement and this is my local blockchain currently you can see here there is no blocks here so as i said uh, in bitcoin a block is generated for every 10 minutes in ethereum it is generated for every 13 to 15 seconds approximately and but here in the local i can set uh, sorry so i can set whether it to auto mine or the mining block time so i can adjust it because i'm not doing any mining here or i'm not doing any real consensus here so i can set it uh, my mining time as well as auto mine that means a trans a block is generated for every transaction new transaction so okay let us connect this workspace with the remix so for that you need this one rpc server address so this is 127 point okay i think it is not visible for you uh, 127.001.8545 is the port address. So let us go to Remix. And previously we connected to our uh, browser node. Let us connect to local blockchain. So we'll get like this. So the same address 127.001.8545. One second. Okay, uh, I couldn't connect now to the local network. Uh, no problem. Okay, uh, the simple like we can just click Web3 provider and we need to give whatever the Web3 endpoint. So this is my Web3 endpoint. Okay, let me change it and try one more time. So it should be 7545. Okay, now uh, anyway, I couldn't be able to connect to it, but it should be simple. Like we just need to copy uh, the HTTP RPC server address. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let me go to what is Truffle and uh, we'll see uh, how we can deploy the same contract using Truffle. So, Truffle is a framework which will greatly help us uh, in reducing the contract development and deployment time so here it is like a basic contract but as the number of contracts increases it will be difficult to manage in the ide also 
previously this uh, remix id don't used to have this tests and other folders and rtkf folders but currently it is supporting it but previously we used to use truffle for all these kind of things okay uh, let me go to so the for this you need to be installing truffle uh, truffle is uh, truffle is an npm package that means you need node.js uh, to be installed so first you need to install node.js npm truffle and then you should get to this uh, step so let me create a folder So there are no subfolders here currently. So simple, if Truffle is installed, you can just simply click Truffle in it. So now you will get a folder structure. I will explain what is this folders, three folders. Okay, so these are the three folders created by Truffles. So this in the contract folder, we'll write the contracts, all .sol files will be in the contract folder. And uh, just give me a second, I will come back to migrations. And then we can write the test cases by using uh, in the test folder. Okay, so the next important file is Truffle config. So similar to the package.json, we'll have something called Truffle config where we can config our truffle network okay so these are different networks uh, these are all commented out but what is the network i use is this development network that is i will be connecting to my local ganache Okay, so this is the host name. Currently, I set it as seven two four five. Also, we can connect to whatever network we want. Okay, so we can connect to the Robson testnet, or we can uh, use some Infura HD wallets, and we can connect to the real Ethereum mainnet also. But currently, I am connecting to my local development network and the other thing is we can configure our compilers currently it is configured to 0 0.8.9 you can configure to whatever version we need but for this to happen you need to install truffle first okay so you can just type uh, full version Sorry. So you can see here, I will get the Truffle version, Solidity version, as well as Node. And there is one more package, very good package. But... End. OK. So now write a new program, uh, the same back.sol. Let me copy. So I have just copied the bed dots all here. And for this, I need to write migration. Maybe if some of you are familiar with the uh, uh, DBMS or database says you should write a migration file like moving the data from uh, one database to another database. I, I, I'm not exactly into that topic, but I just know very little things about it. Uh, similarly, we need to write migrations here. Uh, this migrations will help you uh, to deploy the contract. So it's a JSON file. JavaScript file.
So we just need to give the contract name. The contract name is bet. And with this simple code, you can deploy your contract onto the blockchain. Okay, so that's it. Uh, we have written the contract. Okay, now first we will compile. So for compiling, we can just write TOEFL compile. So after compiling, uh, as I shown you, the ABIs are created. The JSON and ABI files are created. So you can see here a new folder called build, which is having the two ABI files for both the contracts, migrations contract and bet contract. So this mig when you are using Truffle, this migrations contract as well as this initial migrations are needed. It will give some functionalities which are not offered by the Remix. Okay, so we have compiled it. Now we will deploy it. So where we are going to deploy that we have set in our we have set it in our uh, truffle config.js so this is the development environment okay we will deploy it here so a simple command truffle migrate so the flag reset this is required like if you are deploying the same file multiple times this reset flag is required so if i run this command so you can see here currently the number of blocks on my local blockchain are zero i set it as for each transaction one block not like ethereum or not like bitcoin uh, i'm not uh, uh, doing any real world consensus here i'm just kept it as one transaction as one block that is auto mine uh, i will deploy the contract so with this simple command now the contract is deployed into the blockchain if you want to deploy it into another network, advanced network, you can use the name of the network. You can set the network here. Even you can set your Ethereum mainnet or testnet networks here. And you can deploy it. So, yeah, the contracts are deployed. You can see uh, the migration contract is deployed as well as this bet contract is also deployed. You can observe here during deployment, it is taking the migration file and then it is deploying the contract you can see all the transaction details which i have shown you earlier uh, are displayed here this is the total cost of this contract deployment this will be paid to the miner who has executed it currently there are no miners and this is a dummy value you can see here this is the account which deployed it so that means this either is reduced and you can also see here uh, I cannot enlarge it. You can see the current block as four. Okay, that means four blocks are created. Previously, it is to be zero. Now we have deployed. Now what? We need to interact with the contract, right? So previously we have interacted with uh, using uh, the Remix. Remix has provided a beautiful uh, interface for us to interact with the contract. Okay, but uh, what if you want to write your own interface? Okay, so that is what dApps. Okay, so you can write uh, in the Truffle. Truffle itself will help you to write the interface which uh, you can use to communicate with the blockchain network. Uh, currently, I'm not going to do that, but uh, I will show you how to interact with the within the console. But you can use the similar commands in a by using or uh, react or uh, any uh, but using even python or node.js you can build an interface and you can communicate with the blockchain network so the package that is helpful for doing all these kinds is called as web3 okay uh, let me show you web3 documentation So this is the Web3.js documentation. So you can clearly see here, it is a collection of libraries that allows to interact with a local or remote Ethereum node. Okay, by using this, we can construct a beautiful dApps okay, and we can interact with the contracts which are deployed on the blockchain. Okay, uh, so let me open Profile Console. 
profile console also helps me also helps me to interact with the deployed contracts so now where the contracts are deployed here so i have uh, a profile console now which it can communicate with this blockchain so now first i need to fetch the instance of the contract so what is my contract name bet uh, something that a equals to so this is all javascript you know uh, it is async asynchronous so we need to use await keyword and the contract is bet and if it is deployed yes so now if you print a you will get the entire aba this is a deployed contracts aba not the json file which we are looking at so we will get the address as well as this is the aba so we can interact by using this variable a okay now what is the function okay there is a code so these are the two functions oh. yeah the problem is here we have coded uh, these addresses are not available here so we need to redeploy it excuse me for that Okay, oh, let us redeploy it. So contracts are deployed and let us fetch the instance. So this is already declared. now we will call this function what is, what is the function name get input so a dot get input oh so what is the input here some input we need to give let us give it a zero and from whom oh, so the message dot sender and message dot value we need to set it here so from this account right so, and value now, how much either we want to bet 10 ethers as already said uh one ether equals to 10 power 18 v so here we need to specify only in terms of v okay so this is 10 ethers and if I write 18 zeros here, that will become 10 ethers. So it is 10 V. If I write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 20, 18. So now with this 10 ethers. Okay. So the transaction is success. You can see the transaction received. Similarly, uh, send some ethers from this account okay. oh, similar length sending then you can here check so previously the balance is used to be thousand now it becomes nine thousand nine hundred and ninety yeah similarly for this account also it has also become 9990 now let us call the next function that is get winner and there are no inputs for this function if you can see there are no inputs just call it and the transaction is returned immediately and if you can see the balance is updated so now a is the winner okay so this is a simple uh, truffle uh, environment although you can use remix but remix cannot be used for large projects so generally it is always better to go with truffle and truffle 
provides you this beautiful uh, blockchain and this web 3 js interface okay although i have not written the interface if you combine this web 3 js with the react or python or node.js you can develop beautiful dapps okay and uh, so now let me open one of the dapp panels dapp So this is one CryptoKitties is one of the famous DApp. Like there are some standards, like whatever we have seen, Ethers or Bitcoins, those are protocol level coins or tokens. Uh, there is one more called application level tokens uh, that we will call it as ERC20 and ERC721 tokens. Okay, here CryptoKitties is ERC721 tokens and the market value for this CryptoKitties is also like in billions. Okay, what happens is you can own a digital uh, cat and you can breed that cat and you can get new cats uh, by breeding the cats and each cat will have its own value. You can transfer the cats, okay, and you can do, but all this, the logic for this generation of cats and breeding cats is all, all written in Solidity and is deployed on Ethereum mainnet. So this is one of the famous uh, DAP, and there is one more famous DAP, Decentraland. If you have some interest, you can go through these uh, the websites, CryptoKitties or Decentraland. Then you will get the basic idea of what we can do with these smart contracts. Yeah. Now I will pause for questions. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, am I audible? Yes, sir. So, can if participant having any questions, they can ask. Sir, one question came from as a message. Please take the, the yeah, yeah. Uh, the execution. Can you please show the execution of the smart contract in other two also injected? Yeah, I tried for uh, show, showing you on the three provider, but unfortunately, it didn't connect it. I don't know what is the problem. I need to check it. And the injected web three is simple like. Uh, Okay, let me share my screen. So this injected with three. We'll ask you to connect. So now it is connected. So these are the accounts only I have one account currently, but I think if I try to deploy it, I should get an error because I don't think I have sufficient either. Oh, I think I have sufficient either. Okay, let me confirm it, yeah. It will take time because now the real consensus process is taking place. Now you can see the transaction has been executed on Robston testnet and with this transaction sorry with this transaction hash you can directly go and check on uh, the ring bay testnet so so 
this is the ring bay testnet you can see the transaction the transaction is contract creation so the simple the injected web3 it is also simple for web3 provider but currently i am not able to connect to my web3 provider yeah so that is one question so please repeat execution or uh, execution on what uh, either truffle or with uh, uh, the remix jarvis your question let me elaborate yeah uh, ganach like payment truffle so uh, there are simple commands first one is compile so the contracts are compiled and this one is migrate so if you are outside this truffle console you need to I truffle migrate. I'm inside the truffle console, right? I'm just typing migrate, but I need to add reset flag because I'm deploying the same contract multiple times. So I'm just so now the contracts are deployed onto the Ganache, and you can also see here. So you can see the current blocks, and you can go and verify the current blocks, and so this is the contract deployment transaction this is another contract so block 14 might be the contract deployment transaction you can see contract is created yeah any other questions